about to cause you to go from emptiness. God's about you to go, go from barren to overflow. Is there anybody in here that know everybody's not going to like it when you get blessed? Because some folk are going to still be stuck in what they were in yesterday. But you better understand in this season, you're about to get everything that God says is yours. I don't care what they say on the job. I don't care how it looks in the courtroom. God says this is a season that I'm about to blow up in the church life. And see, this is a season where God says, you better look to what I'm telling you to do. You better look in this season. When I tell you to build, don't look at who show up. He's, I was wondering why he said that the other day. He said, don't you worry about how the crowd looks. You better look at the land. Come on, tell your neighbor, I'm looking at where I'm going. I'm not looking at who's with me now. Because watch this other sheep I have, which are not of this fold. Them I must bring also. Is there anybody here that know that God got your blessing in transit? Tell your neighbor, God has my blessing in transit. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. God is a good God all the time, and all the time God is good. Uh, you've turned on to All Creation, Northview, Holiness, Family, Church of God in Christ, where tonight is our life study. And if you have joined us, we say thank you for joining. We want you to enjoy service with us in life study. And at this time, we want you to like and share uh, as we go before the Lord in prayer. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Let us just thank the Lord for being here. Thank you, Lord God, for bringing us here to your house one more time. Thank you, Jesus, for what you're doing in our lives. Thank you, God. Hallelujah to your name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God, for being such a great and mighty and wonderful God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Almighty God. Thank you, Lord God, that you are Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you're the beginning of our faith and the ending of our faith, God. Oh, we thank you, Lord God, for tonight, Lord Jesus. We thank you for bringing us here safely, Lord. We thank you, Lord God, for keeping us all throughout our day. Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, for watching over us, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, when we woke up this morning, we had new mercies, Lord God. We thank you for the new mercies that we have, Lord Jesus. We thank you for a new opportunity of your love, oh God. We thank you, Lord God, for a new sunshine, a new bright and glorious day, Lord God. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for keeping us, God. All all throughout our day, Lord Jesus. We thank you for your grace, Lord God. We thank you for your mercy. Lord, we thank you for your loving kindness, God. We thank you, Lord God, that we're entering the season of resurrection, God. We thank you, Lord God, for dying on the cross for us, oh God. Thank you for forgiving us of our sins and cleansing us from our sins. God, we thank you, Lord God, for making us anew, Lord Jesus. We thank you for sending your Holy Spirit, Lord God, to be our comforter, to be our keeper to be our light, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord God, for shining your spirit in our hearts, God, and around us, Lord God. Let our family see our light, Lord God, so that they may glorify you, God. They want to be a part of you and want you to work in their lives, Lord God, like you're working in ours. God, we thank you for allowing us to be vessels for you, Lord Jesus. We ask you to get the glory out of us, God, in all that we do and we say, God. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for just being a keeper, for keeping our our hearts and our minds, God, in these troubled times in the world, Lord God. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for keeping us, Lord God, and continuing to use us. God, we pray right now, Lord God, even for the people here at all creation, God, for the different ones that are up before surgeries, God, the ones that are still in the hospital, oh God. We're asking that you touch God, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that you will guide the hand of the surgeons, God, that surgery will be successful, God, and that healing will take place, Lord God, and restoration, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord God, for those that are in the hospital beds right now, Lord God, that are going through therapy, Lord Jesus, that are going through physical therapy, Lord God. Touch their bodies right now, Lord God. Let the bodies line up according to your word, God. The way you created the body to function, Lord God. You 
you said in your word that we are fearfully and wonderfully made, God. Thank you for how you made us, God. You know our biological clocks. You know our vein system. You know the blood system, Lord God. You know the bone system, God. You know the digestive system. Help our bodies to line up with your word, oh God. Help us to walk in wisdom with our bodies, Lord Jesus, that you can get the glory, Lord God, because our bodies belong to you. Our minds belong to you, God. Our thoughts belong to you. Our words belong to you. Help us to glorify you in our words, Lord Jesus. Glorify you in our actions, oh God. Father, we just thank you right now, Lord God, for what you're doing in our lives. We thank you, Lord God, that you are Alpha and Omega. God, you are Jehovah Jireh, Lord God. You are Jehovah Sit Canoe, Lord Jesus. You are our righteousness, oh God. You are Jehovah Rapha, our healer, oh God. Oh Lord Jesus, we appreciate you for being Jehovah Jireh, for being a way maker, oh God, for being a keeper, Lord God, for being a burden bearer, Lord Jesus. Oh God, continue to lift the hearts and the minds of the people, Lord Jesus. Continue to strengthen us, Lord God. Help us to realize and know and walk in the fact that you are our joy. Our joy comes from you, Lord Jesus. You are our joy. You are our everything, Lord God. And truly, we appreciate you. We love you, Lord God. We thank you for our sister and brethren in Christ, Lord God. Even those that are overseas, Lord God. Thank you for the mission work that you've been able to bless us to pour into, God. And should have make it to go further Lord God make it to be more Lord Jesus make it to stretch Lord God into, into abundance oh God we thank you for the abundant life that you've given us that we're growing into Lord God that we're tasting of and partaking of God we thank you Lord Jesus for what you're doing thank you for what you've already done God and we thank you for what you're gonna do Lord Jesus truly we trust in you Lord God we're dependent on you right now continue to lead us and guide us oh God by your spirit, by your anointing, by your power, Lord God. Continue to do the work in us, Lord Jesus. Continue to do the work in our communities, in our lives, in our finances, God. In our homes, in our families, Lord Jesus. In the youth, oh God. Father, we just thank you. We appreciate you. We love you. We need you, Jesus. We depend upon you, Lord God. We depend upon you, oh God. Thank you for what you're doing, God. Nothing but praise on my lips for you, God. I thank you all the time. The word says, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, bless your name, Jesus. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Oh, bless your name, Jesus. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. Oh, we bless you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord God. We thank you for the service tonight. Ask you to look upon our leader, Bishop Futrell, and First Lady Futrell, Lord God, that you continue to watch over them. Continue to lead and guide them and drop ideas in their minds, Lord God. Show them where you want the people to go as, as we follow, Lord Jesus. We thank you for them. Continue to bless their finances. Bless their home, Lord Jesus. In spite of the storm, Lord God, you work out every detail, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord God, for how you're anointing their children and watching over their children, Lord God. Those that are in college, those that are here, Lord Jesus, get your glory out of their lives, oh God. And help us to be obedient followers, oh God. Help us not to worry the man and woman of God, Lord Jesus, but that we follow, Lord God, like we should in Jesus' name. Oh God, continue to bless the work of their hands Lord God and their ideas what they have for the people in the name of Jesus oh God we thank you Lord God thank you Lord God for the leaders that we have that are holding up their arms that are holding up their arms Lord God for the work of the ministry for the building of the kingdom oh God we thank you thank you Lord Jesus for what you're doing and we forever give you the praise in Jesus name we pray amen and amen hallelujah With my hands lifted up And my mouth filled with praise Come on, can we raise it all over the building? With the heart of thanksgiving Oh, I will bless thee, oh Lord Come on, let me see your hands lifted With my hands lifted up filled with praise 
lift your hands and bless the Lord. Come on, bless his whole. Every Lamb of God say, for he will do great things. Come on, you ought to speak it over yourself, for he will do great things. For he will, he will do. Speak it to your future. Speak it over your life. Speak it over your body. Speak it over your finances, for he will. Come on, every Lamb of God, lift your hands. Now, Father, we've heard the prayer of faith. We come in agreement now with what's been prayed. Heard not even knowing what's going on, but God, we send your word for Mother Lucas. You know what's going on in her body. You know what's going on. Even as they're transferring her now, we speak the word of the Lord that you will cover her now from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet. What is wrong, you make right. You deliver and set free that she will be a living testimony, that she will continue to speak that what was is no longer. We declare that it is so now in the name of Jesus. If you believe God, come on, clap your hands and bless the Lord in this place. Come on. No, no, Elder. Turn that one around and bring that one to me, this one here. Thank you, sir. Come on, let's clap our hands and let's give God praise. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Hey, Amen. Let's clap our hands and give God praise once again. Hey, Amen. Come on, everybody, clap your hands and give God praise once again. Hey, Amen. Let's go into our teaching on tonight. Hey, Amen. Uh, we appreciate we appreciate all of you pressing your way out on tonight. We're thankful for salvation. How many of you all are thankful that you're saved, that you're sanctified, your Holy Ghost filled? Amen. A lot of folk ain't clapping, but that's okay. I'm glad I'm saved. Amen. I love the Lord on tonight. And so we appreciate all of you. Let's praise God. Amen. For Elder Edwards and let's praise God for Minister Jacobs. Come on, let's put up our hands and praise God for these preachers. Amen. We're praying for Elder Walker's mom. Amen. She's in the hospital. And so thank God, uh, no cancer recovery at, at the hospital. So we're sending the word of the Lord for his mother. We're praying for Mother Lucas. Amen. And we're praying. I'll talk about more about that shortly. But let's go into our lesson on tonight. Amen. Let's go to step three. Let's go to step three. Our life uh, has many terms in which we call roles, not in the sense of role playing, but in the sense of authentic parts that you have chosen to fill. Uh, it says you may have roles in work, roles in your family, and in the community. And in other areas of your life and so these roles become a natural framework to give order to what you want to do and be so you may define your family role as simply as a family member or you may choose to divide it into roles such as a wife mother husband or even father in some areas of your life such as what you do professionally you may have several roles for example you may have one role in administration you may have a role in marketing and one in personnel and one in long range planning. So we see those examples, wife, mother, manager, new products, manager, research, manager, staff development. Uh, you could be a United Way chairperson, a friend, Girl Scout leader, husband, father, for me, pastor, bishop, minister, bishop, minister this, minister that, um, and different roles that I play within uh, the church. And then you, you define those roles, and uh, the assessment was six life roles, and then write the, those roles in the boxes and provide it on that page, and then project yourself forward in time and write a brief statement of how you would like to be described in that particular role. Uh, so I'm looking for hands for those of you that have done this assignment. All right, I see one. Others uh, have just been uh, sitting there looking. Anybody other than? The one person had their hand, two, all right. You guys are getting real laxed here, but that's okay. Uh, one of the things that when we write our mission statements, we gotta remember 
uh, that it's for the sole purpose of defining what your identity and what your purpose is, and that you cast direction for where you want to go in the future. A spectacular tool to use for identifying what the most important thing you should be doing and also help you say no to the things that are secondary importance, right? When I was a young man, um, uh, Emerson Electric sponsored a lot of uh, the leadership principles that I learned at an early age in, in high school all the way up until uh, we graduated and then we expanded it uh, even further um, moving on into college. One of the things that, that I wanted to talk about is a lot of times when we prioritize the A's, uh, everything can't be an A in your life. Come on, just tell somebody, everything can't be an A in your life. A is the thing that you must do that it's important that you get that thing done, right? There are some things that you can classify as a B, that you can classify as a C, and some things can even be D's and, and so forth and so on. But when you try to put everything on your schedule to be A, that you gotta get it done, you gotta get it done, you gotta get it done, uh, then you are not really managing your, your, your time well and then effective. Uh, to be effective, you're not really uh, walking in leadership well. So when everything is prioritized to be something that has to be done and of importance and in that day, uh, you, you are not managing your time well. And so, so it is when you are developing yourself uh, as a leader uh, to walking out your life's purpose, uh, when you recognize your gifts and your assignments, uh, you must really balance out your mission statement. So uh, last week we talked about um, um, the, the, the Church of God in Christ, specifically me being over Missouri Eastern First, I just want to kind of real quickly go and look at what we do uh, as a church. So if you look on the screen or you look at the back of your packet, you will see uh, that uh, first part of our mission and uh, mission statement and vision statement. And so our mission statement is to serve Jesus as we perfect, equip, edify, and involve all the segments of the congregation, that all segments of the congregation, it, and, and that's a typo, I didn't change that, at ACNHFC in the local, national, and global work of ministry. And so we eagerly expect to do this within the people groups of the world by implementing culturally effective global partnerships that demonstrate the grace and the holiness of Jesus Christ. So when God gave me all creation as a young man, this was not something that, uh, I'm, I've, I was appointed to Northview, but uh, because we merged, we still focus on being all creation. And so because he gave me all creation, um, we are church impacting um, uh, the world uh, for Jesus, establishing uh, the work of Jesus Christ. And so it's important to understand when you look at um, this, this vision, when you look at this mission, it's really packed, it's, it's heavily packed. And when you look at the vision of it, it's in the back of the packet. Uh, we, we see that as members and families of all creation, North the Holiness Ministry, that we become so passionate about God's heart for the lost. You hear that again? So both with the jurisdiction as well as with this local church, a uh, part of what I do uh, as it relates to my ministry is impacting uh, the world and having God's heart for the lost, uh, that people, as they grow in grace, become proficient in ministry skills and are proactively involved in strategic outreach ministries, both locally, or triply rather, nationally and glo globally, which will impact each people group with the life-changing gospel of Jesus Christ. So you may never go on missions, but our impact will be felt in that we sponsor, in that we sow, in that we, we connect. Um, you can be globally while you're locally, and we combine those two words as globally. <laughs> so it's important to understand that. So let's look at our goals. What are, what are our goals here uh, at this church as we uh, perfect, equip, and edify? The first one, uh, what we will focus on to achieve our vision, right? That we will pray, that we will see an ever-increasing number of people praying for and the, for the focus of those prayers being directed to, A, at our church, including uh, our sponsored missions, right? We're doing that, ministry personnel, and the projects that we, we have in place and then we, we focus on the ministries of those personnel and projects, God's global purposes, and always allowing God to lead is because he always adds to AC and HFC. I've been pastoring almost 15 years. This year will be 15 years that I've been pastoring, and so this vision has not changed. The mission has not changed. 
uh, how we go about it may have. The fact that we merged with Northview, it didn't change. When Pastor Jack Watson died, his vision died. And then when I came over here, my vision took precedent because uh, of, of that uh, leadership role. I still receive calls. I just received a call the other day from a former member of Northview. And many of you all may remember uh, her, her, her name is Sister Stingley. She served as an usher here, and she was already serving as an usher here when uh, I got here. And I, I had a chance to marry her, her uh, son to his now wife. They're still married. They all live in Atlanta. She retired from the uh, state uh, as a social worker in management. And she just began to minister to me unexpectedly. Uh, I received a call um, telling me to reach out to her. And when I reached out to her, she said, I just wanted to stop my day to tell you how proud I am of you and Lady Futrell. She said, I just want to thank you so much. I brag on you all the time. I know uh, I'm not a member as, as far as, you know, living in St. Louis, moving to, she, she thought for some reason I forgot her. I'm like, oh, I remember who you are. And she said, just the fact that, she said, I tell people all the time, my pastor in St. Louis, he, he's a young man. Uh, but he got an old man spirit. He, and, and she said, uh, I just never forget how you were just a, as a member there for me uh, when, you know, uh, we went through the transition of, uh, she said, just your prayers and, 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 you know, being in the hospital. Now, hear me, if I know somebody's sick in enough time, I'm going to try to come up there and visit. That's what I believe my role as a preacher of the gospel is, that, that we go out of a side of the four wall of the church and that we visit and we minister to the sick. And so uh, I never had that problem. As a matter of fact, at Evangelist Center, that's what I was taught, right? I was taught that, that that's a part of what you do as a, a leader. Um, this, this is good, right? Uh, expediting is good. Um, reading scripture is good. But uh, the real work of ministry is when you can go on the mission field. And so um, I didn't even remember her mom. I didn't even remember what I did. I just was listening. Obviously, I did something because she called me to tell me how proud of me she was. Uh, she talked about me graduating from Wash U, getting my doctor. I mean, things that I didn't send her an invitation. So obviously, she's following me on social media. And she just wanted to tell me how she missed us and that she just thanks, she thanked God for me every day and, and wanted to just tell me how proud of uh, she was of, of the work that uh, we've been doing it so um, and again a lot of people from that era will tell you uh, that I came at a time to bring healing for those people that just lost their pastor I, I took them slow I didn't push things on them I was able to merge our church successfully and 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 um, a lot of people just thank me mother Hearn she she calls me a lot of times just to remind me of those things so uh, my, my point for saying that is you never know how vision and mission will still impact people when they uh, even move on, right? And so, um, pastoring 15 years, I've seen it packed. I've seen it, you know, I've always had people to preach on Sundays, never had that problem, right? Um, the money's always come in, you know, even if it was last minute, God has blessed this church. And so my point is, when God gives you a real vision, and when he gives you a mission and you fulfill that mission and you fulfill that role. Today I was reading minutes of previous minutes that we've had for this church. I was reading minutes even recently as far as uh, last May in the jurisdiction. And to read those minutes and to see that what was done last year at the time of the selection and what was done in May and how you can go through those minutes and cross stuff off that's the marking of when you're fulfilling your vision. When you can go back and look at what you goals you've set and things that you have in place and check them off. Regardless of what happens in this church, this church will always have people. God told me from day one that I'm going to always send you people that even if you can't do it, that will carry prayer for you. Right? You know, if, if it gets to the point where nobody can't be here to pray, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to stop doing what I'm doing, and I'll be here by myself because I know God. I used to do it when we started our church on, on Goodfellow and Wells, right? If it was nobody but me, when we did start praying prayer daily or uh, during the day, it was myself, Mother Yancey, and Mother Young, right? And then we transitioned here, and then it was a conglomerate of people that were here uh, praying throughout the week. 
right? And even now, Tuesdays and Fridays, we still are praying, right? My point is this, that's the first goal that God gave me when he gave me this vision. That if you're gonna impact and perfect and equip and edify the people groups of the world, it's gonna to have to be through prayer. I would, you know, so I always knew that Lady Kay would tell you, Mother Green would tell you, um, Mother Yancey, different ones that were a part of my ministry will tell you, uh, technology was always a component that I knew we needed to have. And so that meant uh, we needed to put our, uh, since this work, we need to put our church on a level where within what, three months, we were on the radio. And within three months, I went in there and negotiated at prime time. Then it got to the place where those time factors, they were putting me in their advertisement for free. They were promoting our ministry for free. So we were pushing our ministry. And so I have a huge following that, that if we don't have church on Sunday and they, and I just put something out saying we have church on a Friday or whatever, people will show up because, you know, other folk members be coming supporting me, right? Um, it's just been that way. So I always knew about technology. I knew about computers and bringing computers in and instead of recording through analog, right? It was always my desire, right, to, to do better, right? I may not have all the equipment that I want, but I know that in order to reach people, you have to invest in the ministry. I always knew that we needed to put a coat of paint on stuff, right? Never wanted a, a written sign. I remember one time uh, the cleaners were putting written signs up, don't use this. I'm like, no, we type stuff because written looks bad on the eye, right? I, I've said that if we're gonna have anything, we need to have clean restrooms because your restroom is a, a, a eye opener for people, right? I don't want people coming to this church, right? I would rather you have the bathroom stinky because I know you feel comfortable releasing yourself than to hold it going home. It sounds crazy, but the reality of it is when you have vision, you want people to feel comfortable to do what they need to do in private, right? And sometimes you need to go about things and, and, and check things. Now, are we doing it right all the time? Probably not, right? But, but the reality of it is when you are wanting God to be your God, you're opening it to say, hey, check me. Where do I need to grow at? Anybody ever been there? You love the Lord, but you still have those moments where you say, God, check me. Show me where I need to grow. The Bible says grow in grace in the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That's why the vision says that we perfect Perfection is not uh, without sin, right? I do believe you can live a life without sin, but perfection is about maturity. Say that with me. Perfection is about maturity, that we perfect, that, that we, we edify, that we build up. And so in order to build people up, we have to let the Lord do it, right, through us. So that means we're going we're gonna to rejoice. We're going to shout, right? We, we go there. And, and some people will say it don't take all of that. But how many of y'all know after you've suffered – through the week, you want to come in and get your release among them that are sanctified. And so we want to have a, a service that's conducive for people to come in and, and be blessed. And so uh, one of the things, if you go back and look at the vision, if you can go to the vision for me real quick, I mean the mission real quick. <clears throat> when you look at that mission and you, 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 you to serve Jesus, say that with me, to serve Jesus. And as you serve him, you're going to perfect, you're going to equip, we're going to edify, and we're going to involve all segments of the congregation. So early on, coming here, it wasn't new phenomenon to have a children's church, right? So when I came here, we just didn't start a children's church yesterday, right? We were doing children's church the first day we started at All Creation because I wanted them to be impacted differently than I was. And so I took what I went through as a young child and thought, it's deeper than Sunshine Band. Tell somebody, Sunshine Band is good, but it's deeper than Sunshine Band, right? Uh, purity is good, but it's deeper than purity class. Youth session is good, but it's deeper than youth session. You got to have a, a impact on young people, and it needs to be every Sunday. And really, as we grow again, it's going to be on Wednesdays. If you talk to Sus Lowe's, he'll tell you when we were – Growing on Wednesday, we were already in, we had things in place to have children's church on Wednesdays to give people an opportunity. Now, this is years ago, right? But, but when we shifted, when people started leaving for whatever reason, it's still on, 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 on hold, but it's there. Just know as we grow and as people bring their children, we will have things in place, right? And so um, I'm getting to the place where I want our budget for children just to be 
just as powerful as one of our utilities. You'll get that tomorrow. Because you got to invest in your future, right? And so um, that, that's one of the reasons why, you know, I'm a stickler for first, second, third Sundays, right? Break on fifth Sunday, and we showcase them on fourth Sunday. So Tisworth and Mother Green, Lady Futrell, will tell you that what was that was going on before we even got here, right? Um, as a matter of fact, if you really want to know how my church grew, it really grew because of children's church, right? All creation on Goodfellow grew because of children's church. Yeah, parents was like, I'm just going to stay. They, like, they want to be here. They, they, they tell me, get up and let's go. And so I'm just going to come to church. And we expanded and we grew. Actually, I took a loss taking over this church in the sense of people leaving because they felt it was too far. We had a huge following on the south side, and they felt coming to Goodfellow and Wells was great. But when we moved here, they were like, Pastor, it's too far for us. You know, I tried to do the investment, so I, I felt that it was going to be a balance taking over the church and grow. And, and we've seen that, right? So, so, so sometimes you may take a hit. Say, say that with me. I will take a hit when I invest in myself. The hit sometimes would be you doing the normal you, which is the wrong thing. Right? And so because people were not willing to expand themselves and go out, you know, and then, then what's crazy about Dean Freddie, when I start seeing people at the Sam's and Walmart, I said, oh, you come out to go shop, but you can't come to church. So you just made an excuse. So I knew that made room for growth. Now, watch this. When we were ready to leave this property and go in Bridgeton, we had a group of people that were saying that they felt that Bridgeton was too far. You know, we've, we've had... And, and I'm going to pick on you only because I remember this. When Dr. K Dr. Hammonds was here, you remember? And he was talking about church growth and asked you specifically about 500 people. You're like, that's a lot. And it happened. But I don't think all of us was really prepared for that type of growth, including me. I wanted it, but it was hard trying to balance cliquish folk. Say that with me. It's hard, it's hard. trying to balance folk that's in it for being in a click, right? When people are wanting to connect because of the click or the status quo, it's going to always be a problem. But when people are, are doing it because, right, um, I, I found out a lot of people in church do things because the leader asked them to do it, right? That's a part of it. But surely you should have a passion and want to do it that even if the leader's not watching you or looking at you or call you to do it, you should want to do it with integrity, Right. Um, we live in a day and age now where everybody wants to be paid. Right. That, that, that we live in a day and age now where everybody wants to be on payroll. Right. Somebody has to be willing to express their gifts uh, for free. And let your gift make room for you. Right. And your gift should produce money. Say that we my gift should produce money. But sometimes what I render to the Lord should be a free service based on what he allowed me to have on this end. Come on, you just missed it. So, so I'm thankful that I have an opportunity to receive funding and whatever on this end so that I can return and be a blessing to the house of the Lord on this end. Like, seriously, when I swiped my stuff on Sunday, I was like, wow, God, I thank you that I have an opportunity. Not that I haven't done it before, but it just hit me swiping it because I swiped it before I gave it to Deacon Freddie or Deacon Mike. It was like, God, I thank you that I have an opportunity to give to this church. And I thank you that I'm the number one tithe in the church, right? Because as you bless me, I want to keep on being right now. Now, Sister Bracken's left, so I'm saying that. So if you want to challenge me, go ahead. We can challenge you. We can, no, I'm just messing with you. That's the inside thing between her and I and Deacon Freddie. But the reality of it is you, you, you have to understand God will set you up. When you render that thing to the Lord, he'll bless you in other areas. How many of you have been there? All right. So my point is, when you when you define your roles and you put that description on step three, I want you to work on that. What's what's the second goal? Prayer is the first one. What's the second one for our for our church leadership and, and mobilization? One of the things that I've seen um, throughout um, this ministry is that God has sent leaders, and I sent them right back out. Like regardless to whatever, there are leaders who. Um, have been under me that I provided ongoing leadership to the entire church and area of outreach and serve 
mobilize force within the congregation in order to provide and promote outreach both here in the St. Louis region globally as consistent with our human and financial resources and our strategic objectives, right? So it's, it's important that as we look at leadership and mobilization that, that, that people are gonna pull on you. To whom much is given, much is required. To whom much is committed to, much will be asked of. And so sometimes when I feel frustrated about whatever role I'm functioning in as a pastor, as a church leader, I have to remind myself to cover yourself in prayer. And the second thing is leadership and mobilization is a part of the goals. So people are going to pull on you. Lady Future and I just met recently with a person who talked about uh, the struggles that they've had in hearing God, seeing what God is saying, and still not understanding all the totality of what God is saying, right? So then sometimes, and, and I know what I said, sometimes people can feel fearful about what God shows them because they don't understand it or don't even feel the worthy that he's talking to them about issues. Come on, I thought I had some folk in here would understand that, Bishop, you talking to me, right? Or, or sometimes you feel unworthy because of what you think you've done. That, that he should not be using you because of the things that you haven't forgiven yourself. And so then to a sense where you have people that sometimes come into the church that are sensitive to God, but scared of him at the same time. And so people that, that want to grow in the knowledge of, of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and grow in grace, but they're fearful because of the hell that they've experienced from inside the church. I got quiet tonight, but that's okay. People in the church, have, yeah, you, his word, ridiculed you and condemned you when the Bible says in Romans 8 and 1, there is therefore now no condemnation to who? A specific group of people, those who are in Christ Jesus. Just tell somebody, some folk are condemned, but not those who are in Christ Jesus. Now, my, my question to you is, why are you condemned? Are you in Christ Jesus? So these are the questions I, I put forth to people. And, and, and a lot of times you challenge the status quo. Right? People are now wanting to be apostles and wanting to be whatever. And the reality of it is, y'all, here's the deal. Ain't got no lick of structure in them to even be w dealing with weighty matters. I'm serious. They have no structure in them to even balance the weight of where the money going to come from. Yet alone trying to tell another pastor where the money going to come from. Right? When, when you are walking out your calling, you're going to tap into the resources of what you had to go through to survive. Right? When, when, since this word, when I help these pastors when they call me, I was doing it before I became a bishop. I had the apostolic on my life. I had churches come out of me. So when she'll tell you, these men that went out and got buildings, I expect them to have buildings. There's no shock when I have men under me that go out and get a business, go out and get a business, go out and get a building. <clears throat> Leadership replicate what they see. It's not, it's, not, it's not strange for me when I see people who at one time were weak in the faith and now they're grown and growing up and developing. Things that would have made you cry sister Rita years ago, oh, that ain't nothing, I've been there and done that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna fight this thing, I'm good. Come on, you, you, some things you gotta grow in. And leadership should give you that ability to grow. But watch this, use, use the system to go. She was nervous as, as that thing and always is nervous. But the reality of it is, I never tell her not to go up there. And I never not see the email go through for the media department. Because the reality of it is, you have to mobilize people. So a lot of times, God may not speak it to you, but he'll show me. Mm. Right? God may not say, Sybil is supposed to, Sybil, you need to pray. But because her leader sees something, I may say, hey, Elder, don't you pray tonight. Let's just Sybil pray. Or I may tell him, hey, now you, don't, now you hear on Wednesdays, I'm letting Sister Silver pray more. 
right? It may start out with a minute, two minutes. In Jesus' name, amen. Now it's praying on point. It's not, it's not saying that I'm, I'm overriding her for missionaries. And it's not to say that I'm putting her up for a missionary, right? It's not to say that um, me giving Sister Roby a key is, is more hurt. She's more important than somebody who, who, who's been a member and ain't never had a key. But pettiness will step into the church and make you think that. Come on, y'all don't want to hear me. I don't have the key, but he give her key. Well, you don't come to prayer either. You ain't carrying prayer like I, like I need you to. You don't get the training on the computer to even go on StreamYard to set it up to do prayer. Yet alone show up. You see how that works? Mobilization doesn't mean that somebody's forgotten about you. There's certain things that I know with my children that if I need something done, I know who can get it done. It doesn't say that I have different feelings for Chris versus Mark or Mark versus Roger or Roger versus Roy. There's just certain things I know can get done because why? They're my children. Every time we get around Easter, I always think about leadership and mobilization about our church because people don't realize this. The first time Lady Q. Futrell preached, I was setting her up. And we argued. Easter Sunday. You know what it was arguing about? Us ministering together. I'm like, I do it all the time. I don't, I don't need it to do it. You, I'm trying to mobilize you because I know the word of the Lord that was spoken over my life before I even knew who you were. And she had an opportunity to hear when we first started pastoring. After that, she had an opportunity to hear one of the prophets, right, Lady Kay? Called me, gave us a right now word about what we were dealing with at that moment, and said she was the one I saw. She was describing how I was going to meet her, the hairstyle. This was in college as a 19-year-old at Oral Roberts. So I knew what God had. And so, again, me being that leader, I'm pulling out because, again, I trained her. I developed her even under Leon Stewart's ministry. And when she got up there and spoke, the Lord blessed on that Easter Sunday. People didn't know we was into it. I mean, I don't know if people know it. I'm just now telling this. And I've seen her personally develop and grow. All right. So, so it's important to understand leadership and mobilization. What, what's number, what's number three? No, on the goals. Ministry training. Um, to provide cross-cultural orientation and training opportunities for those individuals in the congregation who are preparing for cross-cultural service and ministry. To also provide leadership training uh, locally local credential holders as well as those who recognize the call of God upon their life. Right? So Sister Holman, um, Sister McKenzie, Felicia, Sister Missy, those individuals were not in, in, in any credentialized setup. Elder Nick was not credentialized before coming here. Deacon Mike was not a deacon before coming here. Right? Evangelist Spragan was not credentialized. Right, Sister Rankins, it was under this ministry. You were called, but it was it was under this ministry. My my point is, you before I became a bishop, it was to get people credentialized and operating in their office. Right, and so it's important to understand that um, now jurisdictional bishop, you know, pushing him out, not saying. In, 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 you know, like, I don't want him here. But I knew early on, and he'll tell you this, that everything that you're seeing and doing is, is for the purpose of when he calls you to pastor. Right? It's about mobilization. It's about functioning. Right? It's about the hiccups. 
Did anybody see this video viral of the young man who was telling the organist and the keyboard player to go to be natural and all that? Right. But they didn't realize that was the grandfather who told him to just preach the word. And then they didn't see the, it didn't go viral of how the grandfather validated him by saying, when I was preaching at his age or when I was younger preaching, I didn't know what he knows. We live in a day and age now where we, we get on the, 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 the conversations on the phone, text messages, screenshotting, things go viral or we get on the phone for people to validate our insecurities and keep us stuck. That, that, that can't be a level of correction because I'm grown. Right? That, that, that there can't be correction by the leader. You know, there can't be a, a maybe you should try it this way. Or some were mad at the, the person and some was mad at the young man. But they didn't see the last part that that was his grandson and that was, that's true training. People used to be offended with me when <clears throat> I used to say, let me see your messages. People be offended with me when I tell them when you preach, stay within this, this lane. Because the spirit is subject to who? The leader. You know, you, 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 you know you, you're not called to preach behind the sacred desk. Who's called to do it? Me. Even the bylaws are structured to say that I'm the principal speaker of every service. My point is, you, you, you hear in the church, well, I, I, my ministry is to preach the gospel. He don't let me preach. People have left this church because I didn't let them preach. But you, you can't be on time for, for stuff to be faithful. Let me see your message. Let me see sermon prep. I was looking the other day, and I told him this. I was looking the other day in my emails, and I saw sermons that he was submitting to me. And I was like, I got to get back to that with Ross and, and people that's coming up saying they're called. You know? Evangelist, when, you, when you're up doing scripture, are you in order? That's leadership and mobilization. You know, I use certain people on the altar. Y'all ready for it? Buckle your seatbelt. When I see faithfulness. So it's not me trying to, you know, he only used Lady K. And first of all, I'm sensitive who I use anyway. Come on, tell somebody you got to be sensitive on the altar. If I don't feel you have my spirit, stay far away from me. And especially when there is an agenda of altar call here, altar call there, and I'm still trying to minister. Say it again, Lady K. What are you saying? Yeah. What you, they, they're asking, what did you say? Altar call everywhere. And we've seen it in churches. So it's about order. But then when I give you a chance to speak, I want you to work the altar too. Let me see you. Does it make sense? What's in you? What ministry has God placed in you? All right, what's number four? Are we at number four? I don't have my packet open, so I'm going off the screen. Partnerships, right? We've seen that. We've partnered with a whole bunch of folk, right? We're partnering with other jurisdictions. Now that I'm the bishop, we're partnering with the jurisdiction, other jurisdictions to work intentionally in order to provide opportunities of partnership and missions between outreach pro and program and one other ministry departments of AC and HFC, our denomination, local, national, international missionaries, ministries with whom we feel called to partner. You don't see this up posted in the church, but you see it being done. And when you, when you sow seed, we, we give monthly, Deacon Freddie will tell you, Deacon Moy will tell you, we give monthly for the last, before I became pastor here, and since I've been here, we give monthly to the work of the jurisdiction, to the work of the National Church, your laity reports, that supports missions all over literally the world, and we are now taking money as a local body and support India, and we're supporting uh, Liberia. 
right? I'm working on them to send, send us information so we can sow, show, we can show what we sowed into. All right, so partnerships. So when you sow seed, we're partnering, right? We, 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 we partner with Bible Bowl, right? We, they gave out gifts and gave out <coughs> uh, snacks and food to children. Guess what? When, when, when we got up to do an offering, our church sold into that offering. So your gifts are reaching places that you don't even recognize, all because of partnerships. We, we, for the, when you look at, I wasn't even the bishop, when you look at the Black History Program this past uh, uh, February and looked at all of the videos, it was me passing out scholarships on behalf of this church. Every time you turn around, it's me taking pictures with folks. I wasn't even the bishop. Why, why y'all let me get that big? I'm like, who was that big man on there? Right? But, but, but our reach is there. Every teenager that graduated from this church, every, I'm talking about since day one, 15 years ago, we've literally, yeah, he said we started making right essays. We just give it now. But literally, we have given and, and covered, I mean, I think at least four students I can count on my hand. We literally was covering them financially. Bought airline tickets. Paying tuition. This is, this is the stuff, Deacon Freddie tell we were doing this. Now, now, some people act like they forgot what we done, but we helped you get that degree. But God knows partnership. You understand what I'm saying? We've done it. Right? And these folk are grown with kids now. <laughs> For 15 years, we've done it. And we've expanded it. So we're, we're partnering. What, what's the next one? Strategic involvement. To develop plans for our church to be strategically involved in those areas of ministry where we assume primary responsibility and involvement rather than looking to the secular agent for leadership. Currently, those areas are inner city poor of the St. Louis region and building and perfecting our ministry complex that we will impact the whole man's spiritual soul and body. We've done it. We've done it. You know, now we're going to switch that a little bit because I was believing that vision so great that we were literally resources for people with, with utility bills, mobilizing them and paying bills and helping them move and get apartments, right? And then Mother Duncan, I started looking at it, the people that was begging wasn't tithing, but they was coming all the time because they knew we were giving. So when I started looking at the roster saying, hey, print that paper out for this person, run that name and see what they're giving. They're always give, 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 but never sowing back into the ministry. So I felt that I was wasting tithe off of people that were coming to church but, but wasn't supportive of the ministry financially. So we changed that. So we start giving them agency number. Seriously. We did. We, we said, hey, call this number. See what they say. A lot of times I'll call and say, hey, we're, we're, we're a ministry. Can you, at my word, get their utilities back on? Or landlords would, would, would listen to me and help people, and they still were losing their place. Right? So I had to revisit strategic involvement. I just removed myself since we did some time. All right. What's the next one? Structures. To continue to evaluate the structure of our organization to ensure the effectiveness for allowing us to work towards achieving our goals and missions. Always, always reevaluating the structure of the church. What's the next one? Ministry team care, to take a holistic approach to ensure that individual ministry under outreach program credential holders umbrella will be careful in a consistent, sensitive manner. Some things I just do to, to say, hey, we took care of that report for you. You know, that's a part of it. Now, can't do it all the time, right? But, but definitely, um, and, and as we get past this teaching, open back up to give people an opportunity to minister and receive love gifts for ministering. So we try to do that. Is, is that the last one? 
resources and funding. Now, that's the last one, but that's the big one. Lord, send us the money to develop and distribute material resources for the support of the church, local, national, international ministry, ministries. I believe that when you give out, and we've done that, provide scholarships to help our children succeed. We've done that, right? So if I had to rate myself on the vision of the house, I would say overall, we're, we're probably B, B to A. I think there's some room for improvement. That's why you don't let it just sit there and die, but you, as, as I'm telling you to do this, you may look at mine and say, his packet is empty. Well, I already have stuff on paper. So I just need to go and reevaluate what's on paper and perfect it for where we're going, right? So now I'm multitasking both the jurisdiction and uh, the local church. All right, so I saw Sister Lowe, I saw Sister Rita. Real quick, what time is it? All right, Sister Rita, what, what's your step three? Can I, can I share it? Can I, can I look at it if I can read your writing? I think you, can read it. you don't think I can? Let me see. Okay, wife, mother, grandmother. So, Rita, when you was young and thuggish, did you used to write letters a lot, Go, journal? Mm -hmm. You did? I can look at your writing and tell you did that. See, I, see, I read and look and think prophetically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you, 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 you had them quick hands and punch somebody, stab somebody, and then... <laughs> Dear diary, I cut Keisha. Come on, can I prophesy? They laughing, but I'm prophesying. D is that what you used to do? All right. All right. She said, I did. Literally, Keisha. No. Uh, grandmother, daughter, sister, friend, and what's that under friend? Shorthand. That's shorthand. Right there. Church. Church. See, that's shorthand. That do not look like church. An entrepreneur. All right. So, prayer, prayerful and over, what's that word? Um, to pray over and for money. Yeah, see, you don't. Shorthand. Um, cover, uh, be attentive, love to serve in whatever capacity you're needed. And then right between that, she has balance. Right? And I think if you go back and look at some videos when we first started, she felt that what she was doing was working under pressure was the thing for her and that she felt accomplished. But now she's saying, no, I need balance. Because after talking, she's like, this is helping me to realize how I've been functioning is not right. C could it be that a lot of times we've, we've functioned in the capacity and maintained our life out of order, and it was got out of God's order. And so that's why you struggle to be obedient because you want to be in control of what you're used to being in control in. And that's why you never receive the full compensation from God because you're doing it your own way and not his way. Right? I was dealing with a situation the other day concerning the church, that flood insurance again. And the bank just out of nowhere changed their whole heart. It was like, we'll, we'll pay for it. We'll, 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 we'll pay for it in, in advance, right? You, you sometimes have to just sit back and just be like, I'm good. God, it's in your hand. Come on. I need some faithful folk to lift their hands and say, God, it's in your hand. It's in your hand. Her seed. That you is that prayer partner helpmate and what'd you say about mother uh, mother uh, to pray over my kids yeah to so grandchildren yeah. yes my children <laughs> um, <laughs> to be a listener a listener so that means if you are putting that as the role of a mother there was a time that you didn't listen you better do what i tell you to do boy it's good. yeah and and now you're realizing you just need to listen and some, you know, I'm learning even, even one day me and Chris were dealing with a situation and even Mark, they both were like separately was like, pops, I was going to say that if you would just listen. I'm like, ooh, okay, let me, let me shut up. What, what's your role? Grandmother, what does that say? To love my grandchildren. Mm -hmm. Let's go to entrepreneurial, the last one. Willing to take risks. And, and let me back up fast because you 
Yeah, my mic on. <laughs> the reason I said that is because um, a lot of times we go into business thinking it's going to be skipping through tulips and we're not going to have any hiccups. But sometimes you have to take chances on people or merging, you know what I'm saying? And uh, it may not always work out the way you think it's gonna work out. That's why it's, it's important to allow it to be God's. Um, so when you were doing this assignment, did you realize within your roles that some of the descriptions you have under those roles can work in other roles? Yes, okay. especially so, a listener. So, so balance being a wife, balance being a mother, balance being a grandmother, balance being a daughter, mm -hmm. but then also balance being an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. taking risks in all areas, right? Yeah. yeah. So, so when you when you do it, Sislo, pass the mic, Sislo, Sislo. What about you? G E S U S. I want to make sure you spell Jesus right this year. Okay. 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 I'll let you get away with it. G E S U S. Phonetically. Phonetically, teacher, you were wrong. But you, <laughs> you, you, you were dancing with it too, but go ahead. They, know, they don't know what we talked You did. You did that year. I really we, did. I got a kick go ahead. out of it. Okay, family, what are your roles? family member, uh -huh. serving, friend, teacher, children ministry director, and edifier. Okay. Okay. Let's talk about edifier. Okay. I like that. Okay. Edifier is uh, inspire and encourage everyone uh, that I'm interacting with on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. Okay. Children's Church Ministry Director. Children's Church Ministry to lead, the, okay, Andrew, to lead children toward a spiritual health, mm -hmm. spiritual health. Mm -hmm. You know, just really knowing who God really is and applying what they learn mm -hmm. in teacher. children's church out in the world. Teacher, mm -hmm. okay, teacher, teacher, teacher. Giving the students the resource. Mm -hmm. That's not good. Oh Lord. Really, I just come from the doctor yesterday. I'm gonna follow up in my eyes, okay? Oh, and attention is that attention, attention that they Resource need to grow? They yeah. Need to grow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's okay. We're friend, dependable, loyal. Okay. Good listener. Good listener. Honest. Trustworthy. Trustworthy. Encouraging. Encouraging and humor. Humor. Yeah. You got serving. That. Serving for the higher purpose. Rewards come from God, not accepted. You know what I'm saying? So if you're serving, you don't expect. I really don't. If I get it, that's one thing. But I don't expect it. I mean, yeah. if it makes sense a lot. Yeah. That's good. It makes sense. Okay. What's the next one? Family, Family member. Mm -hmm. Okay. This plan that I'm truly a child of God, showing unconditional love and support, kind, encouraging, uh, sharing, forgiving, and a lot of more stuff. Yep. I, I see it. Okay. So do you see the same with your roles that they interchangeable in how you display do you see some of your descriptions for family member do you see that as a teacher do you see it as a uh, all around. children's church it's all around, all right? around. Mm -hmm. so now that you kind of get an example from these three when you start working on the mm -hmm. next part is to start condensing it and writing down your and I need everybody to do this mm -hmm. right I need everybody to do this now next Wednesday we have a service the week after that it's going to be uh, I'll be in spring call down in Memphis. So next week, I want everybody to look at, so Sprague, can you turn to your step four for me? Work on your step three, and then step four, we should all be prepared to um, write a draft of your personal mission statement. Mm -hmm. Right? And on the back of this packet is the mission statement for the church. So you'll see that as an example. So I want everybody to start drafting it again. It's a work in progress. Um, I really would like you to do what math teachers do, and that is like Sister Lowe, mm -hmm. write in pencil if you have it. If you if you got ink pen, I'll try to come up with some extra copies for the draft, or e either when you do your personal, I want you to type it out, or we can work on it on the vision board. But I need everybody to to next week to start, including you, those of you that are online. I need everybody to start working on your draft. Right. Any questions or comments about what we're looking for? All right. Did anybody else do step three that I looked over? All right. 
So, so start working on that. Get busy. Who? Sister Nicole, what? I didn't see you. Come, come, what? Come here. Come get the mic real quick. Are you getting out of here? Uh, the roles were therapist, advocator, friend, family member slash cousin. I kind of combined them. Mm -hmm. Church member and daughter. Okay. Talk church member. Helping. Uh, Giving, helping, learning, mm -hmm. getting pruned, mm -hmm. growing, supporting, serving, praying more for me, myself, and others. Mm. How, how are you pruned here? Tearing away at stuff that shouldn't be there anymore. Okay, good, good. So I'm, it's, it's, it's a work in progress. It's, I'm still struggling, but we're getting pruned. Ther Very well. Ther therapist. Oh, therapist. Uh, That's okay. My role is helping others heal at their own pace, mm -hmm. accept clients as they are, using person-centered, which means I meet you where you are, mm -hmm. being empathetic. Stop for a minute. Did you guys hear something? It, it stuck out to me like a sore thumb. She, she's not hard on herself about her growth because she's letting people grow at their pace. So as a therapist, she is using those tools of being pruned here as a church member on the same pace that she's giving it to her clients. Did you hear that? She said, give them the ability to go and, and pace themselves. That's what she's basically said with pruning. My point is when you do these, and I want you to go back and do it, when you do these roles, you should see that when you write this authentically, that you see these roles, you can change the name in the section and still see it function as a wife, as a manager, as a, what do you do at, at your job again at GM? Appliance manager, right? Compliance, right? You're gonna see those, those things be defined in other descriptions. What's, give me your um, family, the one with the family. Uh, you hear that? They cross over. Loving, encouraging, caring, validating their feelings, mm -hmm. being supportive, enjoying each other's company, mm -hmm. spending time together, being mm -hmm. helpful and humorous. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I'm pretty sure you give yourself time. Thank you. Yep. you. You see that? That's And so now you should be able to go into step four to work on your draft. All right, any questions or comments? So again, next Wednesday we'll be here after Easter. After that, I'll be in Memphis. So you're gonna have a week fr from today to present your draft and then you'll have a, uh, we'll have Bible study here, depending on who, who's not going. Are you going out there? Okay, so we'll, we'll have things in place for Bible study and then we'll come back the following week and, and, and look at some more formal things and then we'll be ready to start getting our vision boards, okay? Any questions or comments for me? How, how many of all this is helping you? I know we ain't shouting on Wednesdays in a while, but this, this is taking root. If you don't shout on Wednesday, come on Sunday. We'll let you shout. All right. All right, listen, uh, I'm going to get off. Uh, let's prepare our hearts to give. Let me get on this. What camera? I'm on that camera. All right. Do I need to turn here? No, can't switch? Okay. All right, listen, I need you all to sow into ministry. Let's sow, be a blessing to the life of the church. We want you to give. If you've been impacted and blessed by this, send us a note so the media team can send it back to me. If you felt that I have been dis, uh, engaging with you, then please charge it to my head and out of my heart. We want to invite you back to working with us. So get that packet and start typing in on the screen any questions that you may have. Dollar sign ACNHFC1442. You can mail it at 1442 Hudson Road, Ferguson, Missouri, 63135. I want everybody to prepare your hearts to give. Don't forget about our announcements. Meet us this Friday at 7 p.m. for a benefit concert sponsored by our music ministry. Our young people will be on, on program. We want you to come on Good Friday and join us at 7 p.m. Join us for Resurrection Sunday at 1045. Prompt, we have Sunday school at 915 and then we need you to come just to hear our babies and then we'll go into service and then we'll be a blessing to our children. We love you with the love of Christ. Until next time, it's my prayer that you be blessed. 
you be strengthened. God bless you. Let's clap our hands and praise God for our own.